You know, our intro just gets me friggin' jacked every time. Every freaking time. What is up, y'all? Do you mean jazzed or jacked? Uh, how about both? <laughs> Why do I need to choose, Javier? I, I imagine you exercising to this track in, in a loop, like just running 40 <laughs> miles and just, just like a loop. Yeah, my, my, my fat ass running 40 miles. Excuse my language, but uh, the deserving so. I am going to work out after this, though. I'm trying to not be fat. Trying to not be. That being said, you know, Mr. Munchies over here, whenever he partakes in product, um, you know, it's not good. I for got me. over the munchies years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all the good stuff, man. And we're actually going to get to some good stuff that you have experienced. We're going to start the show. Let's do some news items first. What do you think, Javi? Do it. And then we're going to have a quick review, a product review from Javier Hase, the man himself. And then we're going to dive into two interviews, one very focused uh, on social media and the social aspects of cannabis, and one very focused on operations and, and operating in the U.S. cannabis market. It's going to be a great show. Super excited. Uh, but Javier, first, let's dive in, man. Um, I, I know there's a lot of headlines you want to touch on. Are, are you looking yeah. to touch on the Juicy Field ones today? Because yes. that one's got yes, me. Yes, please. That is a deep rabbit yeah. hole. And wow. I am engaged AF. Yeah. Wow, man. Well, it, look, the, who, so you just, you, you tell us what this is about and then I have a question. Yes. So here's the, the, the I'm going to try and summarize it as, as much as I can, right? There's this company called Juicy Fields or used to be a company called Juicy Fields. They were very heavy in marketing, right? They said their tagline was invest in cannabis. It's profitable, which by the way, has proven to be not quite true just yet. Uh, and they were promising returns of 66% in three months, ensuring you would get 66% returns in three months. What they did was what they called crowd growing, right? So basically you would uh, mm -hmm. buy a plant at a gr licensed growth facility in Portugal. They would sell it and they would pay you back. But, you know, there were a lot of, of red flags there from, from them showing up in, in golden Lamborghinis to them spending most of their money uh, on marketing, to them not disclosing their financials, to where they were, uh, wh where the company was was radicated. Everything was just a bunch of red flags. Uh, and it seemed like a Ponzi scheme, right? They were financing the payouts of the of the new mem of the old members with new members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? A few months ago, it just went down. It disappeared, leaving a lot of people hanging, a lot of like big losses and everything. And now what we're seeing is there's an attorney for 800 plaintiffs and they're going after Facebook, Forbes, Google, YouTube, you know, a bunch of different platforms for allowing this company to promote this Ponzi scheme of theirs, right? Even CNN, right? Um, so there's about 125 thousand investor accounts on the platform they but said this is where my question comes javi this is yeah. where my question comes is it really up to facebook to cnn to youtube to now i'm not yes. saying that they were that they're in the right i'm not saying that they're in the wrong i'm saying is it really up to them to vet the quality of the investment platform in an advertising situation do you oh, know what yeah. i mean if they won't allow me, if, if they won't allow us to promote a, 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 you know, an educational post that Benzinga does on cannabis or a conference or whatever. I'm just saying legally. So for instance, I don't know, but at least ethically, right? I have, I have an example, right? They came to Oplan Theo to offer to advertise and we said, no, no way. And then they bought Google ads and we, and we wrote to Google ads saying, we don't want this advertisement on our website because we don't think it's legit. So wow. yeah, you are. I do think that you as a platform are responsible for the kind of advertisers you bring home. You know, you go to Benzinga, you don't have any advertiser, right? We vet people. Like we 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 know who we're, we're taking money from, right? It's not that you just go to anyone and go like, yeah, just give give us your money. We don't care. Okay, interesting. What do you think? I, I want your take though. Well, as somebody who ha who has made a living on the B two B side of things, I do find regulations in the US specifically lacks in terms of vetting of advertisements, unless it has to do with the public markets. And the companies are, you know, obviously you can't fraud be fraudulent, which Juicy Fields, fraudulent, right? I Juicy mean, Fields, I can see being taken to court. Yeah. I mean, this is 
the closest thing that that they would that they could have gotten to being public. They were taking investments, just like a reggae plus offering mm -hmm. or any sort of crowdfunding. They were taking money from people, right? And Google has very clear guidelines on your money, your life kind of content, right? So if organic content needs to adhere to these uh, guidelines, so should advertising. That is just my opinion, right? I'm not a legal expert here, but if you ask me, hey, they sh should they be held, maybe not liable, but at least accountable, right? Someone should mm -hmm. go to them and go like, okay, you should reassess. I like what you just said. I love what you just said, Javi. Uh, maybe not responsible, but they are accountable. That, sir, well said. All right, let's keep moving, man. What else is happening today? And then we're going to get to your review in two minutes. What's on your mind? What, What's what on my that? mind? Earnings Earnings are starting to snowball here, man. GTI and IIPR come out with earnings today. GTI looking like a sexy balance sheet. Mm, mm, GTB. Mm. Mm, GTBIF. Uh, and then we also have uh iipr which honestly looked pretty good too they had another deal with cure leaf they uh, they they bought and then a sale lease back in a property in massachusetts with cure leaf and then they sold another property for more money than the one they bought so they actually made money uh on top of that so iipr looks like they had a fine quarter as well um yeah uh, honestly i think we're starting decently strong but we're starting with some good companies too oh yeah gti was was particularly good uh everyone would seem seem pretty happy uh, you know, the, the markets reacted positively. Uh, our good friend Pablo Swanich reiterated an overweight rating on, on GTI, increased its price target from, from $32 to $36. Um, and I mean, you can, you can go to mendinga.com slash cannabis to check out the details in, her, in his report, but it's, it's very interesting. Uh, he explains the, the valuation and why he thinks this is a, an investable company. I will say, Pablo Swanich is the most consistent man when it comes to he stays overweight and he lowers the 12 month price target. You did not see that. He stayed overweight and he raised the 12 month price target. I think he's feeling rather bullish on the sector. Very bullish. Very Currently. Very bullish. I think Pablo Zwanich is feeling pretty good about what's gonna happen this year and what has happened this year. Uh, and I think he's seeing this looking up. That's just my, my opinion on that but i don't know uh javi you may differ uh but regardless man i think i i took note of that anyway so let's and go actually, to your review brother yeah actually that was a perfect segue so paulo swanich is actually chilean uh, i don't know if, if people know this if i should be saying it but uh you know he's a neighbor of ours right i'm in argentina chile is right next door Last week I was in Chile, right? Uh, to visit, to, to, to speak at a conference, Expo Weed in Chile, uh, visited a bunch of friends. And one of our very good friends out there is, is this media platform called Envola. They have about half a million followers uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, they have a smoke shop as well. They're very popular on Instagram. Uh, this is their smoke shop, very cool. And they gave me their in-house brand. Uh, called Cabo, and I'm going to show you some of the some of the things that they have. Right, let's go back. So they gave me a nice kit of very nice stuff that that under the Cabo brand. Uh, this is all paraphernalia. What's interesting to me is this is American level design at Latin American prices, right? So this is the pill form pipe, very cool, great smoke convection. You got a very nice bubbler. You can put water in it. Super fun to use. Yeah, that's, that's handy. A beautiful small pipe. Whoa. Holy Here's God. a one hitter that they gave me. This is for small, small uh, hits, or maybe even if you're in a hotel, <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, you can you can limit the smoke. You're going to like a, say like a cannabis capital conference or something. Yes, like sir. That. This is mm. uh, a very nice pipe as well. Great design. I mean, I'm in love with this design. The, the, the grinder they have is also fantastic. Fun to use, easy to use. Some very nice rolling papers from Christian, Christiania. I don't know how you pronounce that. What's Overall, your favorite of all these? What, what, what is the product that you would buy? This one. This okay. is my favorite right now. I mean, I do like the bubbler too, but this one is, it's just, what I said at first, right? It's 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 first level, first world design with uh, emerging markets pricing. So yeah. go check it out, Cabo. This is my recommendation for today.
got my stamp of um, approval. It's a pretty cool pipe for sure. I kind of want to see that glass in action. I'm not going to lie. Um, maybe one day on the show. We need to get you one in Vegas. We'll make sure. Uh, Simona, take note. Bring some pipes to Vegas for our good friend, Mr. Elliot Lane. I'm saying. I'm saying we let loose in Vegas. Um, Jay, Jay, kind of K. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Javier Haas, love it, man. Let's move to the part where we interview people way cooler than us. Well, way cooler than me on your level. Uh, so next up, we are going to interview the founder of Stoner Talk, TJ. Travis TJ Owens. We'll let him tell us which one he prefers, but I do believe it is TJ. Rohan, let's bring him on over. Hey there, TJ. Welcome in, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Stoner Talk. That is, we're going to start there. That's a bold name, man. Yeah, like are you playing off uh, maybe a, a social media platform? We all know. Yeah, um, we started out actually at smokesesh.life, and uh, that's what we got fun. That's what we were under through our funding on Kickstarter as one of the as the first social platform in cannabis to be funded on Kickstarter. And we raised thirty five hundred dollars with uh, seventy five backers. And then can you so hold that mic up a little bit for us, TJ? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So we we got. We raised the money and we were able to purchase a couple of apps and me being a designer, we just haven't been able to get them online yet. So, um, but that was, uh, the name Stoner Talk came from, from the other platform. Um, and there's a big following behind it. Um, I, I'm not trying to jock it. We're not going to trademark it or anything. We know, we know there's, there's, there's competition there. That's why we're trying to lean away from looking like them mm -hmm. for the most part and offer different things that they don't do. So that way we kind of go in our own lane. <laughs> well, then as a follow-up, let's just dive into your business model a little bit, okay. right? There are two sites. Can you just dive into the purpose of having um, two sites and what okay. they are? So the, as, as a whole, there's, there's stoner talk. That's the, there's the marketplace side. And then there's the community side, TikTok itself, the other platform that that's what their core model is, is a, is a marketplace that that's what they're there for. So as we were trying to get the app that's up now going at app.stonertalk.com, we were we went ahead and had a marketplace which was already up and running on over at Smoke Sesh, and we just transferred that over to the main website, and that's at the, what's at the main website, and then the community is on the back side of that. And how does the community operate? Right? What, how is it different from other platforms? Right? And I'm going to just come out and say it, right? Like TikTok is, is pretty anti cannabis. Uh, we've experienced bans, uh, accounts closed. So, how is, how is Stoner Talk different? And our whole core with, is right? we're, we're cannabis users, we're, we're consumers. That's what we are. So, our content, we're, we're an 18 plus site. Um, you have to agree to an 18 plus clause when you, when you get first get to the site and all our content, it can include cannabis. We're not, we're trying to gear towards an inclusive, not exclusive community. So we don't want to want anybody to say, oh yeah, they're just another stoner site because there are other stoner websites out there. We don't want to be that. We want to be the, we, when you say, oh, we're going to go post on social media. We want to actually be one of those top five or six platforms that are out there. Because that's the that's the community that we've grown to. We want brands that are in and out of cannabis that say, "Hey, we can tap into influencers that are in the cannabis industry." Oh, let's do it because they see the draw. When, and like you were talking about earlier about advertising and vetting and all that, that's a huge part of our model as well. Is our advertisers go through a vetting process? We don't allow the illicit sales. We don't allow this and. We, we're going to charge a subscription platform model to our brands to have a verified account where they can share their products, where they can share their daily de deals, and they can share people actually consuming their products in a safe environment. And then we turn those dollars into other, pro other opportunities for the creators and influencers that are on our platform. Do you feel to date? Oh, sorry, Javi, if you have a follow up, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, just a quick one. It's like, what's the plan to get to to one of to become one of those top five social media platforms out there? Um, just continual, just getting the word of mouth out. Uh, this, you guys are actually our first podcast. Um, I have other podcasts now. Yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, uh, we were featured on on Benzinga uh, a year ago with our uh, press release and all that. So I felt 
I, I came across your guys' podcast a few weeks, a couple of months ago, and I've been watching pretty consistently since. And <laughs> appreciate you for it, brother. Um, hey, hey, it's been super informative. I do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, just trying to get our word out. I, I'm a word of mouth kind of guy. I, every everything I've done has been based on word of mouth. And uh, we have the app, which we have uh, just shy of ten thousand followers on TikTok now, and a good good portion of those are actually the higher end content creators on TikTok to have a hundred thousand plus followers. And a few of them are even verified on the platform and they do cannabis content or they're having to be closet smokers because they have brand deals and their end creator funds and platforms and stuff like that, that if they were to, if these platforms to know they consume cannabis, they'd lose their accounts. Mm -hmm. And we've talked to creators and we know creators that have verified accounts to say they're still, they themselves, even with their verified accounts are still subject to being yeah. having issues with their accounts because of the terms of services of other platforms. So that's mm -hmm. our big, uh, that's one of the key factors is yeah, we've rewritten the terms of service where we allow cannabis. It's the, we're inclusive of it. And as the conversation with psilocybin becomes more and more uh thing, we've already been asked, are we going to allow it? Well, once it becomes more and more of a normal thing, we probably will right now. That's not the focus, but we, that's what we want to be. We want to be cutting edge. We want to disrupt the industry. We want to say, hey, you got to catch up. We got to stay up with the times. We understand that you have to cater. You The other platforms cater to a 13 plus crowd, so they can't cater, cater to cannabis. We can't have all this and that. Understandable. So what do we do? We build our own platform that allows it, that we can cater to ourselves, the community that we want to cater to, and from there we hope oops, from there we hope that the word of mouth just grows from it so. very targeted i like it also i got a good name for you tick shrooms so toner <laughs> talk you got tick shrooms no no oh, javier didn't laugh okay all right we got him i just got it it took okay. me a second i was like thank tick you oops <laughs> so like rearming or something yeah i mean tj i'd love your perspective on something man because it looks like you're trying to build a community within those who have been passionate and in cannabis, using cannabis for a while, uh, you know, it looks like you're really targeting maybe more of the legacy side uh, of the industry in terms of what you're doing. But I'd love your perspective on what many see as a divide between culture and corporate. And are you looking to combine the two? Are you looking to stick mainly on the cultural side of this industry? You know, I'd love your perspective on where Stoner Talk st sits within the future of the business industry side of this industry. Uh, I, the core of it's a, we're the core of Stoner Talk Media Group, which is the whole thing. And as you see behind me, we actually have several. We have Stoner Talk Media Group, which is the uh, platform and the uh, the retail side and all that. Then we also do a swag magazine, South by West Art and Graffiti, which is actually our email list magazine. And then we do, uh, we also host the New Mexico Cannabis Tourism Association, which is a promoter for cannabis tourism when, here in New Mexico. Now that we're, we've relocated down here, we started this actually in Colorado and then back last September moved down here because we felt like that the green rush here was going to be more susceptible to what we were trying to do. Um, but the culture side, because the core of our brand is, an inf is a creator influencer agent. I guess I'm the creator. We're not... We're going to charge subscriptions oh. and then take those dollars and create a platform instead of a creator fund. We're creating a paid masterclass program where I'm going to pay creators a stipend just to be a creator on my platform and to go through learning how to become a creator, nice. setting up their brand, their LLC and all that just so they can become a professional creator. And then as we bring brands on, we can use the brand. We, we, we set up brand deals outside of the subscription because these brands will get it at a discount. So instead of we call this platform, this, this part of that program, the creator pool. So for on typical for an influencer, you'll pay a hundred thousand dollars to get some, some creator that has hundreds of thousands, potentially a million or so followers to make a, a post or two about your product. You could pay our brand a hundred thousand dollars and we'll give you 15 creators. That'll get a bigger pool, wow. further pool down the road because you have more people spread out over your campaign and they're making content not only on our platform, but also content you can use on your other platforms. 
I love that. That is very cool. And I, I love the aspect where you're paying creators. It's like the anti-Musk, right? Like right now, <laughs> Musk came out saying, hey, we're going to charge verified people to say I've been working on this for over a year. Our plan's been in play. Yeah, like this is, we, we want to make a, a, a community that's on the culture of the content creator and stop taking the dollars away from the creator and putting them into bit corporate hands. We, we want, and because all these cannabis brands coming into the industry have these budgets, monthly budgets that they're not being able to spend because you can't buy ads in cannabis, where their dollars going to go. Now mm -hmm. they have a platform, our platform and several other platforms that are in the industry. I don't want to knock there, There's the weed tube. There's buddy Jane, there's can of buds, there's pot smoking.com. There's other platforms and they're all, they're kind of, they're all their own little niche on how they're set up and who they're kind of mimicking. We just came in with the theme that we want to right now. We're kind of like old school. MySpace <laughs> is what people are saying. And we might keep that like that's how we can distinguish ourselves and put that border. But we do have the option to bring it a, a TikTok style, a short form video. And we also we're, in, we're looking at putting up together, which we've already had developed uh, deployed once, but it didn't catch. So we're re developing it now a Twitch style streaming on the back end. That way nice. other creators that way we can reach as many creators as possible in the industry or in the that want to create content because i have crafters i have resin creators gamers music artists like you name it if it's a if it's something that can be done there's it's being done by somebody who consumes cannabis and they're not being represented in social media and that's the whole point behind it is to try to give a voice to to the to the stoner because what do we look at what do we get looked at oh that's the stoner over there just trying to get high <laughs> yeah i love that man i think yeah you're 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 putting a business to the passion of the industry uh and it's something that a lot of people have tried to do and massively failed uh and i love it that you have a full-fledged business model from back to front uh it's fantastic so uh, one more question here. Can you give us a sense of what's next for your business? Where, where, what can we expect next from Stoner Talk? Right now, we're we're kind of in that limbo of we're we're gaining users. We we I was just looking on the back end earlier. We're about forty users already. We've been up about a month now. Um, we just we're using we're having to use other platforms to advertise. We we reached out to our network. We got over a thousand emails on our email list. We got a few of those to come on people. It's new, so people mm -hmm. don't understand that it, it, it takes time. But we're 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 cut, so we're in that we're kind of that that user phase slash investment phase. I mean, we could use investment for sure. There's stuff stuff we need to develop further, um, and just getting the word of mouth out is really like I said, it's just the user base. Once the users are there, brands are going to see it. Once we feel like once it starts rolling, it's not going to stop. There's going to be a mass hiatus from other platforms and everybody's going to be like, where's everybody going? Where's everybody going? And they're all going to starter talk because it's finally happened. And, and with, with our kick, successful Kickstarter, we might do another one um, just to do a second round. Um, and right now, like we've been throwing events. Uh, we host between the three brands right now, uh, three projects right now, we host 13 festivals and, and events here in New Mexico, um, including what will become a, uh, a national touring festival called Potstock. Um, that's a nine weekend festival next summer, which I keep on tapping my desk. Nine, nine weekend festival next summer that'll cover nine genres that's going to be state licensed wow. probably in the next couple of weeks. We should be getting the go ahead to move forward on our ticketing and all that. So that's just really what we're doing. Just trying to reach out, build the community. Awesome. TJ Owens, founder of Stoner Talk. Lots more to come. If you're looking for influencers, influencer marketing, or to be a part of an awesome community, look no further. Uh, TJ, really appreciate you joining us, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. See you soon, sir. Yeah. Javi, super interesting business model, man. It sounds like he's trying to fight corporate greed. Respect. I love that, man. And it seems like for the very first time in a very long time, we'll finish the show on time <laughs> Who would have oh man Who would have known? listen we have cool guests we got to give them time to chat uh our second guest is not going to arrive today so we will get andrew glasho of cls holdings on at another time all good uh doesn't happen often but 
when it does, it is what it is. Matt, um, they'll have a great show. Out of the globe, I know like they're in, I mean, they're abroad. So it's, it's, there's a big time difference. Yeah, in their ab day. absolutely. Thanks to Quantum as always. This is BZ. Are you, are you Benzing a person? This is BZ? Uh, seems like it. But Javier, always love chatting with you, my friend. Let's wrap it up. Less than 30 minutes today, but I do hate saying goodbye to you. Oh, me too. Well, we'll see you again <laughs> on Tuesday. Go to benzinga.com slash cannabis to get your daily dose of cannabis news. Subscribe to our cannabis newsletter, Cannabis Insider. Check out Mr. Elliot Lane uh, daily podcast. I went too fast. I tried ah. to go too fast and I screwed it up. Elliot Lane's daily podcast. Cannabis called, Daily. Aptly called Cannabis ha. Daily. And bzcannabis.com for upcoming Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference. We're coming back to Miami April 11th and 12th at the Fountain Blue Hotel, bzcannabis.com to find out all of the details. Get your tickets now before the prices go up. Let's do it. All right, guys, that's it for the day. Uh, if you missed it, rewind, watch it again. Javier, thank you. Rohan, thanks for stepping in for AT. We'll see you guys next time.